Hey guys, in this video, I will be introducing Elasticsearch and to be accessing and sending commands to Elasticsearch, we're gonna be using a tool called Kibana. And to give some background on what Elasticsearch is and what it allows us to do, Elasticsearch is a indexing tool that lets us uh, very rapidly index incoming data in near real time. So within one second, you can have indexed data and you can make very complex queries on the data. And the nice thing about Elasticsearch and Kibana is that it is all open source. You can go to GitHub and look through all of the code. Uh, so it is free and it is essentially Google Analytics once you understand how to use it. So if you have your own data set and you want to be able to make very complex queries, Elasticsearch is a great tool to know how to use and Kibana provides a very friendly way of accessing and querying Elasticsearch and getting it to do stuff because the alternative to using the cloud-based Amazon Web Server instance of Kibana and Elasticsearch is installing it on your own computer, creating a virtual machine uh, if you're not running Ubuntu uh, a priori. And so uh, there's also a free trial just to play with it and see if you even like this in the first place. Um, so I do highly recommend using the cloud-based version of this stuff. But um, yeah, so that is the basic background on Kibana and Elasticsearch. And so uh, the very first thing you're going to do within Elasticsearch is create an index because you're going to want to start actually searching an index. And so the HTTP verb to know uh, right off the bat is called head, all caps head. And what this is going to do is it's going to check and return a value of either 404 or 200, depending on if this index exists in your environment within Elasticsearch already. So if I run line 242 here, it's gonna send me a 404, telling me it's not found. So what this tells me right now is that the uh, index, temp index does not exist within Elasticsearch. So what we're going to do now is actually create that index and before you do that it is very important to specify a mapping for that index and what a mapping is is it's a way of telling Elasticsearch what field names you're going to have within your index as well as what data type to associate with that field name and this is very important because if you do not do this step and specify explicitly what each field name's data type should be, Elasticsearch will make assumptions based on whatever data is passed into it. And so uh, what that means also is like if I came and supplied and posted a new value into temp index and the field name uh, was not any of these, if it was um, homeless or not, and I said true, uh, Elasticsearch is going to have to make a judgment call on whether or not that's a bool or if it's a text. And so you do not want that ambiguity in your index, uh, especially if you're going to be performing aggregations, which we're going to get to in a little bit. So posting and a mapping of your index before supplying values and populating all the fields is very important here. And so uh, we're going to execute this code. And uh, this is a typical value. They, Because Elasticsearch and Elastic is constantly updating, they will give you these notifications saying that these features and these settings are going to be changing. Um, this is a good opportunity to talk about shards a little bit. Shards are nothing more than parts of indices. So because your data sets can get huge over time, what Elastic does is that they break your index into little pieces called shards. And you will have many shards associated with an index that your index can get huge without taking up too much space on a single drive if we're dealing with terabytes, for instance. Uh, and in addition to that, your shards will have replica shards and those are just backups of the shards. And this adds robustness to your index so that 
if you had a hard drive fail on your uh, server farm, you should still have an operable or an operating index. And so um, with that tangent out of the way, uh, we have now supplied a mapping and created an index called temp index. So we'll recall before when I ran line 242, it gave me a 404 error saying it didn't exist. So if I run this now, it's telling me 200, which means this index temp index does exist. And uh, another HTTP verb we should be well versed in is delete. And this is pretty intuitive. What it does is going to delete the index temp index. So if I delete it and it tells me it deleted it, if I run uh, line 242 again to check if temp index now exists, I get 404 telling me it no longer does. And so what we're going to do now is rerun line 244 to recreate our index. And so far, I have not put in a single thing. All I've done is told Elasticsearch what the fields are and what field type is associated with each uh, or what data type is associated with each field. And so now let's get to actually putting in some data. And the verb you're going to be using in this case is post. And post means that we're going to be creating a new instance of something. And um, so we're telling it to post. We're going to be posting it into the temp index uh, people. And I supply a first name, which is of type text, a last name, which is of type Stevenson, uh, and then a full name, Vincent Stevenson, and a social security number, which hopefully you can recognize is fake. Uh, and then uh, an, a, an is living, which uh, is a Boolean value, a little about me, my age, my home address, uh, and my favorite products that I like to buy. Um, and so to go into the mapping and kind of uh, add some background on what we're seeing here. So type long is my social security number. And we see that first name is of type text, last name is of type text, full name is of type keyword. And the difference between text and keyword is that keywords are things that are pairs or uh, many sets of words uh, that are inseparable. So if you think of New York, New York City, and New York Times and New York Times Square, these all have the word New and York in them, but they're different. They refer to different things. And so you would want to define them as keywords because essentially these words are inseparable because the nouns themselves refer to separate things, making them unique. And so you'll use keywords for those types of things. Bool is a Boolean. It's true or false. You actually type in true or false here. Um, about me is of type text. Uh, the thing to know about the text uh, data type within Elastic Search is that text can be a very long string. And so once you get into full text search, um, defining these text fields is useful because uh, when I make queries, which I'm going to do later on, you can see how you can just put in partial strings and it's good enough to recognize that I mentioned YouTube in my little bio about me and um, Elasticsearch can recognize this. I also put in my age uh, as well as these home addresses and uh, intuitively you can see that there's type int and more of type text. And so I'm actually going to post this information in now and we didn't get any error messages. So that was good. Uh, I also created uh, another temp index here. Uh, another person, John Smith, and he lives next to me at 124 pseudo lane. So we're going to run this code. Another thing is the order that your JSON uh, is seen doesn't matter. Also, the completeness doesn't matter. And so you can just post this data in like so. And uh, so what is cool about Elasticsearch and why don't we start actually making our queries? So the way you make queries is by using the get verb in uh, HTTP. The get is telling you you're requesting something back from Elasticsearch, the web server that's actually running this service. 
So we're going to say get, and we're going to be looking into the temp index people. And I want to search for, and this is where you put question mark Q, and then your actual query. And so uh, let's say I wanted to know who mentioned something about beer. Well, I just typed this in here, and Elasticsearch was smart enough to recognize that I was the person who mentioned beer. Uh, and then uh, if I wanted to look up, you know, what person liked YouTube videos, uh, I'll type it in here, and I see that I was returning this result. Um, and yeah, so it's these are queries, uh, and you can, if you have multi word queries, um, you can type it in here. So, because I made the home address a uh, text field, um, it is searchable as well. So, if I wanted to see who likes YouTube videos and who lived on Pseudo Lane, um, you can kind of do that via this query. And when I run this search, um, I see that Elasticsearch um, found me as well as it as well as John Smith because we both lived on Pseudo Lane. Now I'm going to add in some more people here into our little index just to make things more interesting so we can start doing some aggregations. Um, and in addition to that, you don't need to supply every field in your mapping when you're creating these uh, new things in your uh, in Elasticsearch. And finally, I'm going to put in a last person just so we have a lot of ages. Um, and so these have all gone in successfully. Uh, let's now say that I wanted to see what the average age was of everybody in my index. And so I can do that by using the post verb. And what we're going to be doing is something called an aggregation. And aggregations have metrics. And the documentation on Elastic site is very good at this. Um, but to give an example, uh, let's say I wanted to find the average age. And all I'm doing is telling Elastic Search to go in and essentially compute the average age of everybody in my data set. And so when I execute lines 306 through 311 here, what I am returned is a value of 32.75, which would be the average age of my index. Uh, and so that is pretty useful stuff. Uh, a final thing I would like to talk about uh, in our queries has been the score. And so what I've done in these additional two entries is I have mentioned chocolate um, in three of them. And if I do a query on my index of people to see who likes chocolate, uh, I'm trying to figure out who is going to like chocolate the most, and uh, you know what, which one of these results is most relevant. And so the way search relevancy is calculated is a huge topic in and of itself. But uh, the the main things to keep in mind are going to be the actual term frequency, which is the number of times that a term has appeared within a document. Um, there's also inverse term frequency, which refers to how unique a term is within a data set. Um, so if everyone is talking about chocolate and another document comes in that talks about chocolate and you're doing a search for chocolate, it doesn't, the inverse term frequency will help normalize um, that specific document. Uh, and then we also have something called norm field length, length which refers to the total length of the document. So if you have a short document that talks about chocolate, um, the likelihood that chocolate is the actual focus or the object or the of that uh, document is much higher. So it means intuitively that the document is probably more relevant about chocolate than something in which you have a really long document and chocolate is almost never mentioned. And so when I run this um, JSON query using the get verb, what I find is that I have three indices and they're ranked differently. And they're ranked by this score parameter here. And so what I found, or what we find is that um, 
I the the person who I called chocolate chocolate appears at the top of our list with a score of 0.95 and the reasons for this were, would be that the term frequency the number of times we see chocolate in this document is really high uh, the inverse term frequency isn't going to be that great because I've mentioned chocolate several times uh, throughout the entire index but the uh, field length is also very short uh, and so that's why this score is so much higher relative to these other scores in which like in the case of Jane Doe and John Smith, they mentioned chocolate almost in passing. And so they're ranked lower, but they do have the same score. Uh, and so Elasticsearch has a lot of stuff and there's a lot of material on it. And uh, I highly recommend going to elastic.co uh, to actually learn more about this stuff. Um, it's very good documentation. I hope you guys find this useful uh, and thanks for watching.